<laughs> I'm not where I want to be But I'm in what was once a dream So if I do some quick math The future equals a dream come true Since 1992, In All Honesty, a podcast by Olive Orawo. Hello, welcome to another episode of the In All Honesty podcast. My fabulous name is Olive Orawo and as you know, we are shooting this episode at the Trio Media Studios in Lovington, Nairobi, Kenya. And I keep telling you to come here. There it's a good, it's a good space. You have equipment. If you're a beginner podcaster, it's a very, very cozy space and you love having your projects done here. So yes, do come to Trio Media Studios and tell them the story for In All Honesty told you to come. But with that said, today on the podcast, we have failures. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, we were to discuss teachers, basically experiences of children born to teachers and preachers, which is pastor, teacher. We know, we know people who are, who are struggling to grow up and then there were us which is not easy. So before we get into the discussion, let's uh, give it a chance for everyone to introduce themselves as they'd like to be known. Um, hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name is Agnes and I am a music executive and a meme distributor. And yeah, just vibes. <laughs> Thank you for coming once again, Aggie. We really appreciate and Emmanuel. So, hi guys. My name is Emmanuel. Um, yeah. I'm a chef. Mm -hmm. I'm also a client service executive at mm -hmm. the moment. And uh, yeah, I love memes too. <laughs> <laughs> I was a born and raised pastor's kid. So, we'll okay. talk more about that. Yeah. Yes, we'll talk about that. And I give for you, it was? Yeah, my, um, I'm a teacher's child. <laughs> Me, I'm a teacher's child as well. So we have someone in studio who's incognito. You want to introduce yourself no, to me? Yeah, definitely. Uh, for me, I'll be identifying as Frank, which is, I feel, should be neutral in terms of gender as well as identity. For me, I am both a teacher's child as well as a pastor's kid. So I prefer to think of it as double trouble. <laughs> yes, it is. Jeez. Where? <laughs> I got a response from someone who also has a teacher and a pastor for parents. But anyway, we'll get to it. So as usual, I usually put out a prompt on my socials and I ask people to share their stories or their opinions about the topic at hand. And we did get responses and I'm going to read. Um, I, I don't know if we'll get through all of them, but hopefully we can. I'll read through them and there'll be our talking points. If it triggers anything, just tell me if you have, if it if anything comes to mind, then we can just talk about it. So I can start with the short responses. And on Instagram, I asked, how was life with a pre how was life with a preacher or teacher parent? And what were the traumas? <laughs> Hi, uh, the first person here said, the girl. I meet people whose only memory of me is how teacher, that is my mom, would beat me in school. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has any. Well, I'm lucky enough I wasn't in the same space with my mom because she's the teacher. So I didn't have that personal experience of her as a teacher. Okay. And you had your, your dad didn't beat you. No, my dad didn't. My dad actually never caned me. Yeah. Ever since. I, and the only reason I wasn't caned myself is because I didn't like my siblings. Uh. So because I accepted school, like they tell me their story of how they took me to kindergarten. And, and it's like, I followed our house help. She used to have a friend who was a teacher in a local kindergarten. So mm -hmm. I followed her there. Then I got lost in one of the classes. And yeah. The next day, the teacher just told my mom, please bring her to school. <laughs> I was very happy to go to school. I yeah, loved mad. school. I used to sing. What a wow. <laughs> the narrate -E -O -O. So basically, 
Yeah. Every time my parents tell me how it was raising me in terms of school, they say I was very easy. It was easy. I gave them because I'm the eldest. Mm. I gave them confidence to have more kids, <laughs> thinking they get a version of me. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, but my father was a, he was a lecturer. Yeah. He taught um civil engineering, masonry, building technology to students mm. um at a polytechnic. So I've not met people who say that oh your father caned me or something cuz at the time yeah. of course at that age there was no uh, caning but I okay. do know some of his students All right from the from the way you described your dad I didn't even think he's capable of caning cuz Aggie has been here before anyway <laughs> <laughs> And for me yo I was being beaten more than the other kids so if like someone does a mistake when you you do a mistake it's like you're beaten twice mm-hmm. So mm, but it wasn't it wasn't like bad but because I remember there was another classmate whose parent was a teacher as well and him it was war it was mob justice whenever he did something wrong and that's the memory of him that I have and I tried to look for him online because I don't I don't keep in touch with people and I I can't even remember his name so I was just trying to figure out if I can get him but I didn't um of course I won't say his name but if you watch my podcast and you know we shared a class you can contact me your te- your dad used to teach Kiswahili that's what I remember um <laughs> so when I said what to who I want to expect I am him in word knowledge and conduct and even perception kwanza i avoid people that know me as my dad's son and not me as a person does anyone have experience with that yeah i thought so <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, first of all i'm emmanuel uh, yeah. being born and being named a religious name there's already so much expectations mm. so in my parents mind yeah they had mapped out my whole life so this boy growing up atanza shule mm. on sundays atakuwa sunday school when you grow up you'll be a sunday school teacher you yeah. go study become a pastor that's what they have in mind so wait they wanted you to become a pastor they assumed they didn't want they assumed yeah so uh-huh. everyone had that expectation because there's a thing where families your dad is a pastor so it's naturally expected either you'll be mm. a preacher or there's a role in the church you will take up so yeah. everyone when they see you it's like ah i'm total pastor yeah. nani so how are you how are your studies they start preaching to you it's, it's exhausting <laughs> <laughs> and do you feel like people come to you like they would to your is it your dad who's the pastor yeah i think uh, everyone was ex- was assuming you are religious you guys are miracle workers mm, you guys are the entire family yes yes so <laughs> if your dad is a preacher yeah. even sometimes you go somewhere and you're the one automatically selected to pray no one has ever asked me if i know how to pray Everyone assumes ah who you anajua kuomba who you anajua ku preach there's a yeah. time I was asked to preach I'm like hey hold on hey. in Sunday school like, yeah but your dad is a pastor I'm like okay it is genetic <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is not the monarchy but okay <laughs> so do you feel like right now you don't want you really try to avoid people who know you as 90% yes yeah, yeah I would I would guess so yeah Frank I made a deliberate decision that throughout high school all the way to campus no one knew I was a pastor's kid so my life was Oh because the moment they know there's an expectation you have to be religious you have to be in the CU which I was but obviously this politics involved in any institution including the CU so for my school the one that I was my CU chaplain there was a bit of an issue when it came to leadership because they wanted to get me into a position but the girl who was there was like no i deserve it more so mm. out of pity they gave it to her i was like nah it doesn't really make much of a difference i've done this so many times you take it but no i never deliberately told them that i okay. was a pastor's kid that's so even in that. school they didn't like even right now no one knows i am a pastor's kid unless you were with me when i was a child 
Ah, okay. okay. What a wow. That's a dream. Um <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to create for myself because ah, a peaceful life. Yeah. As a child was already enough because I remember one Sunday when we were having our service early in the morning right after setup because our setup used to start at like 6:30 in the morning so you wake up at 5 mm. not even dressing up just picking up instruments setting up washing the church and then just waiting during those prayer moments this is these There's even a photo of it of a preacher who was a guest preacher came in and prayed and said I would become a pastor. Got torn up from that because every other person in my life has been coming in like you will be a pastor. I'm like, no, the hell I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no. So <laughs> we kept denying. Come on, story of Jonah. We may end up there. If not, I am definitely not going through that path. Okay, where? So it was true you guys are traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which was being born into, into something with dentures. Yeah. Okay. Um uh, hey, the next person here says yo never even thought of this. Tell me why I am a whole pastor now. <laughs> 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 And then the next person said, so here no one did, did you didn't end up as a teacher. I get I cannot teach for even to save my life. I over explain things. I always yeah. imagine they don't understand me. So I always over explain. Oh yeah, you try to. Because of that, I just don't think I would thrive as a teacher. Okay. Fun fact, when I was watching 100 Human on Humans on Netflix, it's a social experiment. There's an experiment where they ran exper- it was an experiment <laughs> and women they were asked to describe tic tac toe and it came out that women use more words than men mm-hmm. and the research is that women have had over the years to work more mm-hmm. to like explain something like if a man came in with this bottle and placed it there if a woman came in with a bottle she'd have to explain when she's coming with a bottle mm-hmm. so over time women it became part of our dna we just Oh, use more while we are, yeah we are a bit more verbose mm. <laughs> anyway that was there um i digress someone else says my dad is a pastor and my mom is a teacher <laughs> 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 oh, it's not you it's her. <laughs> but this is not you this is someone else my dad is a pastor and my mom is a teacher so trust me i get you i haven't been back home for a year I can understand. I really do get it. Um someone else said where well, I have a degree in trauma, hypocrisy and many <laughs> many more. <laughs> and I remember reaching out to this person and they said they would never never come and show their face and tell us that it's them mm. who are going through this. But do you feel wait this and that? Do you feel like there's aspects of your parent being a teacher or a pastor that you took up the way she says she has a degree in trauma hypocrisy <laughs> and many more things cuz me i noticed the organization i have is from my mom's the way she used to organize her things mm. as a teacher like scripts in a car hv you mark this going this way you arrange the marks going this way the the system of organization in my life is mostly from my mom so i don't know if someone else adopted something from their parents being a teacher or a pastor and it was subconscious you didn't But expect to i think personally i am not really religious Mm. but i have that reverence like yeah i know there is a higher being yeah. i really love worship songs yes uh if my mom if you are watching i'm sorry i don't go to church <laughs> 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 but there's deep down there's that you know that person there's a personality where yeah. i can relate to worship songs where i know this song is talking about this and this but I think it's the environment of the church true that took me off but the values they taught um even I find it very uncomfortable even to steal 
like there's a time i had uh, 50 bob makanga didn't take the transport i alighted i realized i felt so guilty one day i met him again i was like there's a day you didn't take yeah so there's there's those me. values they taught <laughs> that are deep down that deep is down. so true yeah so the honesty there's a there's a lot of uh, just the person yeah. i think the person the uh, That yeah i took are. the traits but not the whole drama of church let's cry no mm. that makes a lot of sense yeah. so they shaped a lot of my personality mm. while i was young i can actually relate to because my mom was like a strict christian she's not a pastor but they held positions in church and to date my inclination is towards choral pieces i love choirs mm. and i can't explain why when i'm listening to music i just so sometimes i'd share music and people are like kwani ole vulio koka imagine it's just music <laughs> <laughs> yeah frank do you have anything come to think of it i may be one of those people who failed at being christians because i have a friend who's also a pastor's kid then right now they've been pastors for like three years Mm. But for them I don't know what got them to think that was a good idea but thank God they're doing it for me, I picked up the good habits mm. the really special ones to me because organizing of course the teacher aspect the preaching bit well it assisted towards becoming a public speaker of which I did several mm. pieces so my confidence with crowds was good yeah so I ca- I took the traits went with them i just didn't carry the whole culture just as a mm. minor that's true it teaches yeah. you a lot of things yeah i think even the public confidence because I, i've never had issues with facing people public so oh that yeah helped. the only thing is now i hate being famous mm. so i hate when people know you when too many people know you in a place it was like oh mm-hmm. god you, you know when you're in yes, church yeah. all eyes are on you so yeah. like ah mm-hmm. to our so how you walk how you dress her. so all that during childhood when you grow up you tend to i'd say no to wanna be a celebrity <laughs> yeah. well we hope this podcast blows <laughs> now you know <laughs> yeah. um let me read uh, i think the last few i've got here um i would do a mistake at school get beaten by my mom the teacher then get punished some more back at home i know yeah yeah I, I think, think I saw that, that was too. partly because at school the teachers required to be like your child is supposed to be good <coughs> enough to be an example to the rest. Yes. So aside from you having the pressure they also have the pressure. If the child is not performing they're like how can you teach all these other children if your own is too much for you? That's okay. It's okay if you punish me in school, but why are you following me back home with <laughs> mistakes for school? Because at home I need the, the parent. I don't need the teacher. Yeah. Cuz that is very that's just wild. But I saw that a lot even in the schools that I yeah. went to. Like in high school, there was a chick who was the deputy principal's daughter. And I think at some point she got expelled or suspended for some mm-hmm. disciplinary stuff. I don't want to imagine what what went down in that house because the way teachers used to want to be perfect yeah, yeah and i think also be. in the past question you've asked i think that craving for perfection mm. that, that's what i got because me if things don't go according to plan for me i always feel so bad yeah like if i make let's say the, the new year is starting and i have these resolutions and i don't achieve them i feel so horrible or even if i achieve them but not in the manner i hoped to mm-hmm. i don't follow the route i had planned now that sucks and i think it's because of that thing of when you're a teacher's kid you're supposed to be perfect you're supposed to get the right grades you're supposed to i don't know it's crazy it is do you feel like um expectations okay and how has that played into your adulthood were expectations for you much higher and do you still live with those expectations up until now or did you break them like for us of course people thought we'd be extremely successful mm. or thought I'd be I would just be extremely successful so even having a career in the arts already have failed mm. so <laughs> <laughs> it's considered failure yeah so i was set to be 
to be big to be known to have careers that flourished and made money and yeah i don't know if that is something for i think my dad had a lot of expectations for me and um i started saying i'll be a chef since i was seven years old mm-hmm. and he always shut down that conversation like he wasn't even giving it a year yeah he was like you know because your mama out so even in church you most of the time you'll find me in the kitchen hanging out with the folks i had yeah. i i am i have a very curious mind so i, I see someone chopping onions i'm like why are you doing it like this why like mm. i need, i wanted to know so that one was a no it was a no brainer like you're not going to be a chef and then one day he was hosting guys from the church of course no one else came home <laughs> <laughs> and then that day uh i did a whole budget i did a menu i did a budget what to buy and everything and the event was like it I, it wasn't an event but yeah everyone was like what you're the one who did all this i'm like yeah yeah and then that's when he started the he's like yeah my son has done this yeah, yeah. he will become a chef i'm like hold on hold on he <laughs> didn't want this <laughs> so <laughs> tables flipped yeah so i think people always have expectations until even the chef story there was a chef in church who bought a car yeah that's when people started respecting that profession because mm-hmm. they were like mm, kupika tu kupika tu so that that is that was the turning point that's when people started seeing hey, this can be a respectable job yeah? yeah yeah so the expectations were you will be a preacher and all that and all that. so when you're talking about being a chef no one is listening and then something happens and they realized hi yeah mm. so now he was so proud he used to brag ah my son will become a <laughs> chef and, mm. <laughs> so yeah. right now are you are you sort of in good in good terms like they don't you don't feel the undertone of you you are a failure personally no mm. i think the i think no uh personally i am always that person you have your expectation that's on you this is mine <laughs> so <laughs> i rate nice. myself based <laughs> on my expectations so yeah. i know a lot of people had expectations i was mini likuwa chopi by the way mm. i was a chopi everyone was like ah we are pita aone amepita ataenda accounts so everyone had those i'll pick those top careers yeah. even when i was signing up for in campus so i went to tali did an interview uh, and then i went to technical university so i'm applying and these people are looking at my results they're like uko sure you want to do this i'm like yes mm. At, you don't want to do engineering or what i'm like yeah. no 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 this is what i want to do so everyone had that but me this is what i decided and yeah so okay. i mean yours is the dream because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i am out here struggling in fact I, i keep telling you i still get sent job applications job yeah people still do yeah, yeah like, people still do people consider me jobless some people consider me jobless yeah so. true and I'm, and i'm earning more than them but yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're not talking about it as your issue you're like yeah that's, that's yeah, you that's, that's you that's, that's, that's not me that's you yeah and i th- i feel that's very admirable considering the levels of people pleasing we got into yeah. being a teacher's kid personally mm-hmm. because I, like i remember because for me in school i wasn't a choppy but i wasn't dumb mm-hmm. i was very average Averaging. i was a, i was a solid b c child mm-hmm. i was solid you i'm sure of i won't fail but i won't pass either mm-hmm. and i felt the need to overcompensate now with other things now i need to when they need someone to go speak when they need someone to present when they need i needed to mm-hmm. excel in those things to compensate for my mom being embarrassed about my grades mm-hmm. and now looking back I was a smart child. Mm. I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't getting I wasn't dumb like things were getting through my head. It, I just couldn't maybe you'll find it a particular subject that's extremely difficult yeah. that's now pulling everything else but it was just now I got into people pleasing where I felt like I needed to excel in so many other things yeah. to just compensate for that shortcoming you shortcoming uh, in yeah in now class. I don't know if that's a thing yeah, you have. You're making sense. Yeah, actually me career wise when I finished form 4 me I knew I always wanted to work in entertainment, music, work with artists since I was like <laughs> It's okay. 
or oh, I knew I wanted to work in entertainment since I was like 15, 14. Yeah. So now when I finished form 4, you know when you're now applying for your to what you're going to study in campus. So I was qualified to go, to go to campus through the those days they used to call it job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they've <laughs> changed. Yeah, they've oh, changed. Yeah. <laughs> what is the name? I'm forgetting it. But they've changed. Uh-huh. So now you see job you used to apply for the courses you want. Then um I think there was a fee you pay like 500 bob then you select the university you want to go to. Mm-hmm. Then they mail you now the calling letter from the uni. Yes. So my dad at the time wanted me to do pharmacy he had he he just saw me as a pharmacist and honestly even that b plane i got on chemistry it was a miracle you know it, it was a miracle <laughs> Same Same it was like chemistry i did not like math and i yeah. knew i just and there was no course for people who want to be music exec so i had to find something that would lead me would to that lead, path because yeah. even i knew the organizations i wanted to work for me oh wow that. and i ended up working for them funny thing mm. but now my dad was like you do pharmacy he was talking to me to to get into kmtc mm. him and the sister were trying to convince me so they are telling me i'm telling them no me i don't want to do pharmacy maybe something else because i loved biology i really did but now i'm asking them is there a course that doesn't have a lot of math and chem mm. i'm willing to because now you see when you're a, a teacher's kid you feel this urge to please them but when i went now to apply for job i did it behind his back number one mm. i applied and i made sure that the letter goes to him the 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 calling letter <laughs> and let me tell you my inner the day the calling <laughs> letter <laughs> to go and study call All hell broke loose <laughs> well <laughs> that man was breathing fire i remember him calling now his fellow lecturer friends asking them what the hell is this who will employ her is it <laughs> and he really i know he really wanted me to do pharmacy but and that was mm. the very first time in my life that i rebelled mm. because i had always been the good child i went to school i studied hard i did everything that was asked by of the me book, by yeah. my parents by my teachers you know my dad used to be set a good example for your siblings i did that you know mm. but now this time now when i rebelled i think it was so shocking to him because he was like i give you're not like this mm, what this what's is not wrong? you yeah, this is not you but in hindsight i'm really glad i did what i wanted because um mm. as much as he sent me to university shingo upande and all that it paid off sometimes yeah. in moments when my career is not working out i remember oh, i should have done <laughs> pharmacy i'm so yeah, glad that <laughs> that i chose my own path and because yeah. of that he didn't impose his wishes on my siblings mm. i literally made things easier for them because oh. now my sister who follows me wanted to be a chef so now when how she, she wanted to do that my dad was very supportive was open to it yeah because yeah. he realized now you cannot force them to do what you want they are mm. no longer kids Yeah you are the guinea pig. Little oh, so you are saying you on their behalf again. <laughs> <laughs> And I think she'll come back next week for first born. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And Frank uh, expectations I think I ended up be adapting a well could be a good or a bad character where I'm over understanding because on one hand I'd no just the only hand I'd always find a reason why something has to be justified taking her situation for instance and also Emmanuel's situation ideally in as much as they were leaders in their own capacities holding positions they also are still humans because mm. my parents yes both of them have those part- positions the TK and the PK part and all they want to see is something that conforms to what the society wants If they send you to school they want you to be a certain thing because that one has shown the most security. Yeah. I was supposed to okay this was the plan. If I get an A we're becoming a doctor. If I get a B we're going to journalism. If it's a C we'll study law. If we get D is and that to Jeshi because you need security. <laughs> 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 you need to find a job that is secure and permanent in the long run because yeah. they think of it like What if I wasn't here would you mm. be able to stay and sustain yourself because mm. I don't want you to be alone when I'm not around and you're suffering that would really hurt their heart so yeah mine was ending up becoming over understanding and I carried it everywhere so in as 
uh, whatever career I chose, which was for data analytics, where? Mm. Right. So that thing is hard, trying to code and shit <laughs> and then um, trying to even get opportunities and they require to have like a five year experience. I'm like, bro, I'm just 20 something. Oh, and the job got con- uh, adjusted to coops with a very yeah, funny yeah, spelling. Coops. Uh, yeah. coops, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 that's what I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. You're, re- you're revealing your age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I left school like I'm so glad when you said you actually rebelled, because I actually rebelled going to campus as well. Mm. Um, I, they had my, my parents had set it all out. If you know the layout of El, of Eldoret, the the place I was either to go to dentistry school, which I could walk to mm. that school, or go to now law school mm. annex. There, is, my tattoo was 10 shillings. 10 shillings. I remember those maths. Kitwe. And I was just like, uh, I rebelled. Me, I rebelled because I didn't want the hassle of of taking care of the household while studying. So mine wasn't so much the course I was picking. And I remember picking the course. I was just like, I think me, I was picking an easy course. I just needed to do journalism because it just freaking made... I, I don't know. Me, I thought it was easy. I wasn't ready to commit to dentistry, to whatever. Mm. People who know me know that I do not like to study. I hate school. Me, I get mm. education. Like, I get educated through passive means. Mm. I hate sitting in a class and being lectured. So I'm imagining having... If I'd have followed what my parents wanted to the T and then went and did a course for four years where I was just struggling to get through. Mm. And then I finish and then I can't even use that course. And I don't like school, so I can't go back to school to study something. Hey, yo, show me. Uh. <laughs> you decided to choose your struggle. Yeah, I was so glad that I it wasn't even rebellious per se. It was just th- the same thing. You're a goody two shoes yeah. where it gets to a point where you choose something for yourself and everyone is shocked. Everyone is shocked. Yeah. Like, yeah. How dare you you are never like this. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, I remember I sat down with my dad and my aunt when they were walking me through the options at KMTC. And in my heart of hearts, I knew I mm. do not want this. I do not want I don't want to and I actually ended up getting an internship in the communication department at KNH. After now, during because I was in more university and they used to send us for crazy ass long holidays. Mm. So during that period, I ended up now looking for an internship. Yeah, and I worked in a hospital in a hospital, and I knew mm. this, this is, is not, not for it. me. Yeah. I'd go home sad. You yeah. go to the cancer ward, you see, because we used to um, write stories on patients who are unwell so that they can get donors. Oh, you and me so, did the same internship. Yeah, so you go and talk to these kids. And it's really sad stories, especially mm. the stories of the minors who are sexually abused. Me, I'd go to the loo to cry. And I was just mm. like, I could not survive in this environment. It's not for me. Yeah. Even just reporting about it, like doing what I have studied mm. in a hospital. I was a lot. A Let me yeah. just deal with my artist. Thank you. <laughs> but as Frank says... In there, it it doesn't it doesn't come from a bad place. Yeah. To them, they needed you to secure your future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To them, mm-hmm. they thought these are the careers that will ensure that you have something for yourself, even when I'm not there. True. So it didn't really come from a bad, from place, a bad place. Yeah. But again, shout out to all millennial and Gen Z parents. They are breaking the. Yeah what are they called the, the, cycles, yeah, the cycles and they are doing such a good job because they are balancing it out so well right now um, um i'll now read uh, the now the longer responses someone here told me so just watched your episode on why i left religion it was interesting to say the least my dream is for a society that is tolerant of other people's choices We'd love that, wouldn't we? Mm-hmm. Um, so on to the next episode for parents or uh, for parents of, t- I think she meant children of teachers and yeah. preachers. My mom is a teacher. 
she was a mom for me throughout in school out of it i don't think my younger brother would be of the same opinion for him my mom was a teacher all day every day which is interesting considering we were raised together yet the approach to parenting was different do you feel like you, you and your siblings experienced different parents in terms of that being a teacher or being a parent yes or at, sorry at preacher I think uh, I was the good one. Of <laughs> goody, course, goody everyone sitting here is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so when you're the good one, yeah. uh, anything you do out of the norm was like, what? And then mm. you're like, hey, but my sister does this all the time. So I was, my sister some, would go to church when she feels like. For me, Ooh, it was, yeah. it was on Monday we had, there's always a, I don't know, a service there was always a service so on monday there's a service there's always something happening in, in church. church yes so on tuesday <laughs> there's a home fellowship i don't know people are coming mm. on wednesday there's midweek service on thursday there's a choir rehearsal on friday there's kesha bible something study. happening on the day <laughs> on saturday the bible study on sa and choir practice, choir practice. again <laughs> and then on sunday the church itself oh, after church there is something like there was always something monday yeah. to sunday and i was always the one with people everyone was expecting i will show up mm -hmm. either i will come and help in arranging or something but my sister she will do what she feels like mm -hmm. she feels like coming to church she will come so no one was hard on her yeah, yeah everyone was they all the weight was on me like hey you have expectations even Are you sleepovers the, born? the last you're the last born yes so my my dad was very hard on me but my my mom i think my mom was the more understanding one mm -hmm. of course last borns and mothers oh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> she's the one i could talk to about anything mm. but my dad built that wall uh, i think she was more free with my sister because my sister was very vocal like yo i don't want this i don't want this mm -hmm. so yeah even as we grew older my sister started drinking i'm not so one day we sneak we snuck out with her and she used me to say that we snuck and went to akesha so we were like oh if it was akesha it's okay oh, but yeah. it's not akesha we went <laughs> she was drinking <laughs> liar liar and, and then you know i don't I, i didn't know how to lie so my mom called me kando asking me to tell her the stories so i'm telling her the stories we went to a party uh -huh. there was alcohol <laughs> you went somewhere where there's alcohol like literally even the there was a there's a time we used to live in kaluleni being a pastor's kid we moved a lot because my dad was transferred to this church, oh, church we church. moved so we used to live in kaluleni and there was a busaden near mm. our home It's mm. just a route. The day I passed there, I was beaten because I passed that route and someone reported me. But my sister ah, passes that route all the time. Us. Yeah, so <laughs> the smell local is, brew is up. Is yes, a yes, yes. They're like, you know, Emmanuel, even your name. God with us. Yeah. Yeah. Emmanuel, God with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with her she was more of a free like yes, ah, she yeah. can yeah that is maybe she had her own struggles because you know you mm, can't see the other true. person's point of view but from my point of view she was the favored one and she was like mm. she got it not as hard especially from my dad mm. yeah okay that's uh, uh, anyway i i clearly saw the differences my mom was more of a parent to my sister and a teacher to me throughout and I think I've stated uh, anyway we'll have these discussions even the next few episodes um it was very clear me my expectations were set I was supposed to be the grown up the one who understood things the one who passed the one who set an example for my younger sisters set an example for other people in school who are even my age mates it always felt like I had to walk the path of perfection and then I'd just peep at my sister like this. She's doing the wildest things. No one, <laughs> no one is cares. asking her. In fact, some of the things she'd get congratulated for. Me if I got dirty, I'd get kind. Why are you dirty? Who who will do this and that? My sister would she'd come home looking like she had rolled in soil. And it would be, you'd see everyone being like, "Yeah, when you're mtoto, this is how <laughs> kids should be, you know." <laughs> And I was like, guys, so for me I I saw a clear cut difference. 
I my mom was a teacher to me throughout, but I felt like she was a parent and a buddy to my sister because <laughs> my mom was wild enough. Um, my parents were wild enough to father my mom's education so that by the time I was in university, my mom came back as my lecturer in, <laughs> in, <laughs> in campus. And during those times, there were wild things like if I'd miss class, I'm a lecturer here. <laughs> if I'd miss class, my mom is texted by a lecturer. I didn't see your daughter in my class. <laughs> surely, surely. Sini campus. <laughs> surely. There's no... <laughs> But and then ah, I should get together with my sister and then they go for lunch. Now we are in the same campus. It's a whole family affair. Uh, ah, she goes speaks my sisters. They go for lunch. They're just they're, they're chilling. I'm just like, eh. but me, I've always seen her as a teacher and my sister, I think, sees her more as a parent. Funny. So, yeah, I don't know for you if that was a thing. I really don't think for me there was a difference. Because now you see even me in my dynamic, my mom's um, attitude towards education was not as strong as my father's. So mm. that sort of provided a balance. Because when mm. my dad would call you out for bad grades, my mom would be like, as long as you're healthy, as long as you're happy, as long as... My mom looked at other things, other mm. facets of life. Mm. But now when it comes to how my dad if i compare on how he treated me and my siblings of course he was a little bit harder on me and yeah. his excuse was always cuz you are the eldest you have to set a good example for your siblings cuz may remember even in high school there's a there's a point i really struggled with my grades and i think now looking back i feel it's like the pressure that was on me mm. because when i joined form 1 i was doing well then as time progressed i was just not as good as i was before yeah and my dad would call me after every time the report card is sent. We'd sit with him. We'd go through my grades one by one. My siblings, none of that shit ever happened to them. I don't even think, I think maybe the only time they'd <laughs> sit down and talk about their grades was academic day. Yeah. Let me tell you a short, funny story. <laughs> when I was in high school, yeah. our Swahili teacher was Meru. He had a heavy Meru accent. Mm -hmm. Now, my dad is the one who used to come for all the academic days, right? Yeah. And I hated it when he came because he would always just be lecture. Okay, apart from, my dad was, he was a good storyteller. He used to make me laugh. He was vibes, yeah? Mm -hmm. But now when it comes to education, he just has this other whole persona. You're like, eh, bana. Yeah. So this time around, my dad could come and I, I don't know what the reason was, but it must have been something so important because he never missed. Now mm -hmm. my mom is the one who had to come and just to show you how education was not such a big deal to my mom, the teacher is talking to my mom and I. I studied in a very cold place, right? So my mom has come and she used to like, my mom still loves wearing shoes. So we are seated there and the teacher is talking to me, telling me about my grades. And, you know, I noticed for some reason, my mom is zoned out. And when I look at her shoulders, they are moving. And I'm like, Please don't tell me you're laughing. <laughs> don't tell me you're laughing at this man's accent because... Anyway, so once we got out of there, my mom is like, wow, no one is like, what is this? Peter. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> and you know, I'm looking at my mom like, what kind of parent are you? For the Why are you laughing? She had covered her mouth with the shawl and she was dying of laughter because of this teacher's heavy Excellent. accent. And I'm like, the times my dad has come here, yeah. He yeah. doesn't even hear the accent. He doesn't realize he has the an accent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but my dad, the teacher, was always right. So, yeah, yeah it, for me, I think what made it easier also is how my mom, like, mm. she viewed education. My mom was also hard on us on her own things that she felt we were supposed to be good at. Like, you know, you have to be clean. You have mm. to know how to cook and clean. You have to be, you know, the way mothers teach you to be a good wife. Yeah, yeah she was hard on us for that. But my dad, education education he didn't even care if if you had showered but if you had gotten an a <laughs> yes you're the best Good child so, a. Yeah. <laughs> so that that really brought a balance for us so i don't think i really got a lot of trauma from being a, a parent a teacher's a teacher's, kid yeah but yeah there were just some instances where i just felt hey dad like you're overdoing mm. I mean, I just nearly punguza to nimianguka na max tatu. Why? Yeah, why? Yeah. Why is it such a big deal? Oh, it was. Yeah. Uh, Frank, do you have siblings? And 
Yes, uh, oh, there's a quite big age gap between me and my siblings, more than 10 years. So they tried both versions of parenting and of course parents don't really know what they're doing. So for me, I was the third trial test. <laughs> so they let go of a lot of things. They weren't so much on my case. They made me think independently, decide what I'm doing. Uh, so I didn't really have like a laid out plan of what I'm supposed to do. And that really was very nice to enjoy because mm. my sisters would look at me like, eh, ha, what? <laughs> 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 yeah. what? They just let you decide you don't want to go to that school. You want a different. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But the moment you requested to switch schools, they were like, that's where they're putting their foot down. Mm. I don't live in that school. You chose that one. Stick with your decision. Mm. Actions have consequences. Mm. Ah, okay. Must be nice to have balanced parents. Must really be nice. Oh. <laughs> Um, I'll read my second um, response here. It says, please hide my ID, my name. Um, some people may know my parents who could. People are still living in fear. We can't hey. <laughs> We set a blaze. <laughs> <laughs> my dad is a pastor and my mom is a teacher. Muko yeah. wengi. Um, a session for just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> double trouble. We call it double trouble episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, double <laughs> trouble anonymous. Uh, my dad is a pastor and my mom is a teacher and growing up was very hard at least my dad was a bit modernized if i can put it that way but my mom where i never got to see the difference between school and home because quote lazima ningesoma and books were not my thing and worst part was my elder sister was a bookworm and a genius. Na mimi, we, watch her too. <laughs> when my sister got married last year, December, I moved out and I've not been home since. And home is not even that far, but I just don't feel like. I show up once in a while, but never spent the night but never spent the night. I dropped out of campus and actually got a very good job with an NGO, but my parents have no idea. They think Nico long holiday. Wangejua kinaeza wekwa kwa maombi na viboko kozwe. We'll start with Frank who relates the most. <laughs> There's, uh, there was something, just go back a few sentences. Um... I'm not, I've never gone home. Is that it? Just above that, like two lines before that. Um, uh, I never get to see the difference between school and home because Kote Lazima Ningesoma. Yeah. <laughs> that one 100% relating because uh, my dad was so serious. He's the pastor, but no, we literally had a room designated for studying. So while others are watching news and having their dinner, uh, mm. uh, in the room, no some so they would lock the door yeah. leave me with my books and tell me to study there's a study table all the books i'm supposed to read that day i would put them up and sleep on the table <laughs> <laughs> so the moment they walk in and see my sleepy face they're like oh, my mm. then they do like a quick quiz of what is you more studied uh, so i had to memorize i got so good at memorizing. capturing the moment and then just sleeping it off cuz i eh, eh, Please don't make what, me what, study. What, 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 what? Yeah. yeah. And not... Hey, yo. <laughs> she also had a sibling who was really good. So that mm. set pace for like her. Yeah, oh, yeah my reason. sister is very smart. Okay, she's slow at learning, but when she does, she keeps it. Yeah. I'm mm. fast at learning, but really slow at keeping it. Mm. So I could learn something right now. Short memory is very good. Long-term mm. memory, that's what I feel. Mm. So for her, she ended up being really good at what she does. Right now, she's doing pretty good. Mm. And with the next part about, I think it's just a trauma response where we want to be as far away as fr from the source of trauma as possible. Because mm. the first thing I did after I got a relatively stable job was move out. Mm. Running away as far as possible. I wasn't yeah. even that far. I was also like pretty close. So... I was only popping in for food and going back to my place. Mm -hmm. Cassie, COVID, I would still be out of the house, but COVID made me come back. I'm still trying to get out. <laughs> well, maybe with the, with the economy of a son from Sugoi, 
We'll put you in the prayers. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be a while. <laughs> Might be a while. Yeah. And uh, she also said she has a good job that the parents still don't know yes. about. Uh, aside from having that pressure of people always knowing your business, I'm so incognito people from up country call to say hey by the way how's nani doing so what does she do today will we be drinking soda anytime soon <coughs> referring to like either a marriage proposal or mm. a graduation something because even my graduation was lucky my own family didn't know i went with yeah. my gown took my paper and went home i didn't want no mm. big headlines i've had headlines my whole life mm. for this one moment let me have my win in silence mm. so yeah i get that Okay. So for you guys do you feel like there's things you had to do that you cannot tell your family? Yeah, I think for me it's niko job. Please don't ask more. Uh, what do mm. you do? I work in the hotel industry. I think that's enough for Okay. Uh we parted ways with, with my dad some time ago. Uh that's a whole other story. <laughs> But I think my mom knows I work. She doesn't know every time I lose a job I'm like hey, I've lost my job. But the details like uh, so this is what I do Monday to Friday and no 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 no. Yeah. So yeah. I think yes. I don't think there's a I don't I'm not like him or her where yeah. I want to go away from them. Yeah. It's just I like my independence. I think there was always a rule in the family where my dad used to say, I don't know whether he was serious or not, but when you hit 18 you need to start thinking of how you will be independent, mm. which that one was stuck in my brain. So the moment I hit 18, I've, I've always been uncomfortable being home. Okay. So yeah, being independent it's not an act of rebellion for me, it's more of my independence. It's just you. Oh, yeah, it's just, just okay. me deciding and then choosing i i love the fact that i can choose if i feel like going to church i can go mm. but not oh, yeah. like i have to I mean, yeah mm. and like memes for nani yeah. sorry to interrupt nani place dent kingston so the fact that i can choose when to go to church which church yeah. and i can also choose not to yeah. Mm. I think it's not a really an act of re- rebellion but it's just me. Uh I tend to avoid the churches I used to go with my folks mm. because the, the whole drama and I think people at church don't understand separation. They don't they don't grasp it easily. Mm. So every time you meet someone, how is mom? Uh, so this and this and this. How is dad? Mm. I don't know. Like mm. what you don't talk I'm like no oh, I don't yeah. know <laughs> Yeah and then they're like yeah but uh, we will pray for you I'm like okay 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 yeah. <laughs> So yeah um, so every time you meet someone who knows your parents there's always that Yeah Yeah The trick is to say they are fine How is Agi yeah. they are fine I don't know how How's Emmanuel he's fine Cause you've not got a news that this person is dead or yeah. so they are fine you've not lied <laughs> Um, uh, I think the the honesty bit was really engraved. What is it? Yeah. Every time someone said, uh, I don't know. Just How is it? Fine. I don't know. We don't talk. <laughs> We can't log yeah. on any of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like so. Yeah. Frank, you wanted to say something? Yes, I have a feeling it's a chick because for me, uh for chicks it's not expected that you move out at all. Like uh, let your husband come and you feel true 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 because I moved out at 21 and they were like What? Cuz my sisters moved out in their tw- late 20s, mm. like close to 30, and mm. it was either marriage or they had a job somewhere else that required them to move. Mm. So moving at 21 was an abomination of some sort. Yeah, and that I would get. For me also my sister, um I don't know about my brother, he's a bit way older. Um but my sister was did things by the book. And so by the time I was coming along and I'm not a I'm not a rebellious person mm. I'm just I think I'm 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 silently tough-headed mm-hmm. if <laughs> if you tell me to pick this cup and I don't want to pick it 
I will not argue with you, but you won't do it. I just won't be yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think me coming along with that energy, it felt like oh you are attacking, you're mm. you're charging towards like you you've become so ungovernable. Mm. But in real sense, I was just choosing things for myself. I'm just like I don't want that. I want this. But considering having probably a sister who's done things by the book, that sets like the standards way high for me and i'm thinking i'm not even problematic i'm just these are things that people would do normally mm -hmm. but that's just having someone else who's done things right and also me <laughs> things that my parents do not know my family do not know i don't know whether it was the being a black sheep or the expectations for for being a teacher's kid being so high that i just stopped updating people on anything i do so to me when we say you've you, there's something you're doing your your family is not aware of me it's my entire life it's this <laughs> podcast it's my career yeah. it's the house i've moved into no one knows what i'm doing at any particular point in my life yeah. so i don't know i don't know whether that was as that result but i know it's because sometimes that expectation is is set on you so much that mm -hmm. if if i were to move out of this studio to another studio my mother would come and tell me why are you moving to an, that to another studio you know that What other happened? studio yeah. is more expensive but me i take that as negativity yeah. i don't want i don't anything that is not supporting what i'm doing i consider it negative and so maybe that's the energy i'm trying to keep away and for me that your advice i've had advice all my life i've had how to be and how to like take my life my whole life that right now i don't want anyone telling me what to do so if if i have to move houses and the first question my dad will ask is why are you moving from that from that neighborhood immediately i feel attacked and i feel like i don't want that so it's an unhealthy thing to have that i will work on but i know that's where it stems from question yeah. for you yeah do you feel like you've been exposed to them long enough to know what to tell them when they start asking questions for now cuz cuz you know you also these are your parents you've known them since you were born for now i know i know the only way is to not give you information that way you don't have information for giving for telling me anything hmm. i i i if if i gave you if i told you i'm moving you'd have something to say but if you didn't know i'm moving it's not it's an, an issue oh. so that's why i just want to, i won't say anything so if you find out i moved you're like oh you moved yes i moved so i already moved there's nothing there's <laughs> <laughs> the main reason i am asking is because yeah. uh being in the church environment <laughs> part of the chick that was saying something about uh phd in hypocrisy hypocrisy was part, um partly because you learn how to act a certain way oh that is church, true where people ask you oh so what are you doing these days you'll say something that will please their ears but not mm, exactly what's going on the truth so for instance your scenario of why did you move i have a response for you based on how i know you and what mm. i know you want to hear from me Oh that is so true. Yeah. If it was Emmanuel, hey, honesty, yo. <laughs> yeah, that is so Get true. Yeah. <laughs> I think th that's I think that's most of us. You filter yeah. what you share. Or rather yeah. you live two completely different lives. Mm. Cuz me I'd go out and drink and come back home sober and cook for that family <laughs> and set food on the table and wash dishes and no one knows I'm fucking drunk. It's all about how you word it. You went out with friends that's all they know. Yes, it's No, true. I didn't go. They didn't know where I was. Oh. So I had to drink during the day. So I can't drink at night. Oh. So I have to drink during, during the, the day, day and, and I have to come back and serve this all the things that I do in this house. I have to come back and do all those things. Uh, okay. And then like on Sunday you'll call me and you're like, "Oh, umerudi." And I'll just tell you nimerudi. But si jarudi kutoka church you don't know where yeah. I'm from <laughs> so you literally live a double life it was eh, it's hectic then you get so trigger so many trigger so many affect 
Um, you wanted to say something? No, I'm just fascinated by that <laughs> dual life that I've I've had some interactions with preachers kids and I've mm. seen that like it's it's like they have I, I don't even know what it is. It's like two different people. Yeah. And because me most of them they'll be my friend, that friend that they can be free with. Now you, you see the other side. Then you see them in front of now the people who they are supposed to look perfect in front of mm. and you're like bruv yo what's up because <laughs> it's so... even difficult to introduce your friends to your family cuz me people know me as two very different people mm. if you showed my family that the tic, the olive tiktok <laughs> they don't know who you are talking about yeah. this is an upright girl who wakes up in the morning dresses nicely goes and works hard she doesn't joke around with people she's very stern so you literally have multiple personalities which is psychotic okay now you see me in my upbringing my parents were not very religious and yeah sometimes i'd feel like hey why are we not you know you, you hang out with other kids you hear what their moms are doing what their dads are doing you're like us our family is chill yes we used to go to church every sunday but mm-hmm. what i used to look forward to sundays because after church my dad would take us out and mm-hmm. he always knew the yeah. best joints to go to he'd take alcohol in front of us so and we didn't feel that um mm-hmm. you see the way i don't know i feel like pastor's kids it's deprived from you so the minute you get it mm-hmm. you want to i think the Almost most i did indulge. as a child was just to you know the curiosity of okay how does beer taste you just taste yeah. it and you're like yuck it's not nice you leave it mm. but there was no that thing for at if you are caught it, it's there it's the dire worst consequences thing ever yeah so i sometimes really sympathize with because i know one and that person has shown me two different sides of themselves mm. makamul is like Mm. Are you I, I feel like Are you okay? Mm. You did therapy. <laughs> <laughs> no one of us is okay. <laughs> that is established. I feel like we've not spoken for some some <laughs> some people cuz I know pastors kids who've completely rebelled and for them it was rebellion for I'm doing this mm. just to hurt you. It's it's out of spite. Mm. So uh, some went into alcoholism. I know someone who just like went into tattooing and piercings. Mm. And it's out of spite like I'm just doing this to get back at my parents. So there's that lot of people who I know exist. Just know you you are seen. You're not in studio today. We hear you. But we know your <laughs> stories and feel very much seen. And the, whatever you're feeling is actually valid. Um your parents want the best for you and sometimes you know such people have not grown under maybe very healthy parents. Imagine growing under a narcissistic pastor who yeah, all they care yes. about is the reputation they are they putting yeah. out yeah. there. Everything is how the brand will look. So kids their kids are suffering under psychotic behavior mm. and they have so maybe that's what you see now as extreme rebellious behavior because you know what is usually so sad about this whole this church people you are trying to please is that when shit hits the fan they won't be there for you that's true how many people have you had they were religious they were doing all these things in church and when they lost their their what is it when they needed the church the church the didn't help yeah. them i i know of someone who the mom was unwell and because she fell ill it was cancer for a long time mm. and <clears throat> so the mom was not able to do those church things as she used to so because yeah. cancer had taken a hey, cancer cancer is it's hey. a bitch. it took a toll on her mm-hmm. do you know when the mom died and ilifika time ya mazishi the church was like we can't officiate this because hajakwa kikuja is in meetings as a church you imagine and i was like make it make sense yeah. this woman had cancer i even went and saw her myself mm. she had cancer she couldn't come because she was unwell what do you mean it was ah man me if you yeah, do that to people me have... hey, me na toka hiyo kanisa yeah i think also we it's we we also living behind the scenes you see things that happen one of mm. the things that really triggered me was when uh, two 
young adults so one was the pianist and one is in the choir the the youth and then the guy impregnated the girl mm-hmm. and apparently you can't come to church now i'm like okay are we supposed to repent <laughs> so yeah. it, it didn't make sense for me Those, such things didn't make sense for me there was even a story of how a, a lady reported that one of the pastors was eyeing her and uh, to me it sounded like borderline sexual harassment like yes. you want me by force mm. and then i she doesn't want her back so she's apparently rebellious so and, and then yeah and then now everyone in the church is judging her no one is even looking at the at the pastor mm. because pastor can do no wrong and um, even at home my my own dad uh, i remember there's a day where he was beating my mom so i was like mm-hmm. No, I went and called there was a senior pastor uh, mm. so I went to his place it was far I walked I went and then we came back with him now he's guiding and counseling them and then this same person is preaching in church yeah. and then I'm tell- asking myself how that other person was kicked out of church so a lot mm. of that they, I think they didn't make sense to me it's traumatic to see behind the scenes when you're not part of it it's like you it's like being born into a cult you didn't ask to be here yeah, and yeah. now you're seeing the hypocrisy and it's beyond your control yeah like, first hand yeah you know there's a tiktok i was uh, sorry about interrupting but the thing with church generally you never find whole people there part of the reason why i'm tr- scared to shits about becoming a preacher of any sort is because you need to deal with delicate broken hearts on daily. Mm-hmm. You're still human, you're still learning your walk in Christ and you're required to raise someone else to become receptive of aside from the word how to manage living in this world. Because mm-hmm. we can't separate the world from the person themselves. In as much as in your instance you explained about how the pastor can do no wrong think about it like a diplomat in a foreign country they have a pass for being a diplomat same thing applies to pastors as long as you're a preacher you have a pass you can do whatever you ha- want and you're still going to be given that pass cuz you have basically the cover but it should not drown the fact that you're still human if you make a mistake the elders in the church should be able to come to you and hold you accountable to your actions. Yeah. The moment there's accountability, people will stop fucking around. That's For me actually I have an I'm, I'm Catholic and I have an aunt who is um who is a nun. Actually my mom's side we have two nuns. One is my mom's aunt, the other one is my mom's sister. And because they are my relatives, I see their human side, right? Um and i love my aunt to bits um my in fact my aunt the one who is a nun she's literally my bestie if she asks me to do anything she knows <laughs> i'd go to the ends of the world for her but yeah. because we are family i've seen her have her, her what is it called her her yeah, human side, side. Uh-huh. you know there's a time you will even be walking with her and you see people doing for her favors because of the cloth she's wearing mm. and i'm like this, she's human she's human just like you because me i've seen that yeah. <laughs> there's a time she came to visit me and i remember the the watchman at the gate he even he was just so humble greeting her <laughs> and after she left now he's asking me oh did she come to pray for your house no she came to show me the house i think about the mango eh na ifri jako imeza and i'm like Yeah because I see their human side I really do not understand why we hold this religious leaders to like a god mm. status because they are human beings just like you they have their weaknesses yeah. they they can make jokes they can make they can make mistakes but the way we hold them even up to a certain standard I think that is also what makes them feel like I have to look perfect mm. and because of that now it transcends down to the kids they are trying to raise the families they have so yeah we just need yeah. to do better even us as a society yeah. and treat them as human beings you can't really take the privilege away someone <laughs> yeah. said uh, grace is not fair because the grace they have is because they were good with both god and with men mm-hmm. so you get the privilege of seeing their human side which honestly is an honor 
those who don't identify mm-hmm. their authority and the position they are in they do still carry a spiritual power yeah, of some sort over them, if yeah. they decide to pray I'm not going to guarantee like there's a good chance my prayers will get answered <laughs> if they mm-hmm. pray because they have dedicated time into whatever they are doing same way I trust a doctor who's been doing medicine for 10 years over someone who just went to webmd and became oh mm-hmm. you have this Mm. Yeah. I trust the one who put more time into it. So privilege taking it away. Check. It's a kongumu. So we just acknowledge that that's where now this this trauma stems for children or maybe pastors and teachers because you see you see the person the world cannot see. Yeah. And I think for me what was even very disturbing I think right now I've made peace with, with it. What was disturbing growing old? No, when I was growing older, when I was I young, <laughs> Jesu, <laughs> I'm still young, but it's okay. Um, the the when I when I when I come to Agi and explain to Agi about my mom, oh, you know, my mom is Mkali, she's on this. Oh, you know, my mom told me this. She shouted at me, and people are just looking at you like you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this is around never, you know. <laughs> like, it's an angel. Yeah. <laughs> This, this one woman why are you are lying in fact you, you you we know you are rebellious see you have tattoo you are lying yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine living like that a child who sees everyone they know they know if i go to the church and say this man is a he, he's a is a sexual predator no one will be no one in that church will believe that yeah. child and she, her, she knows she's seen her father do these things so I can imagine the trauma of just being in it. I I I to me it feels like maybe you see how when you get into entertainment and you're taken into Hollywood those things Cat Williams was talking about yeah. where <laughs> you're the sober one and you're seeing the cultism. Yeah. And and no one will believe you outside. Yeah. <laughs> no one will believe. Yeah. You. Now that so, even you've mentioned entertainment, yeah. I've just been so fascinated. You know when I was like little looking up to these music execs in Hollywood and now seeing the stories coming up about them, mm. I'm like, what do you mean this guy is a predator? I looked yeah. up to him. He's the one who made us no so and so this he was a dope and that I want mm. to be that dope. So it's yeah, it's it's crazy. sad. I can imagine what PKs, PKs. Wait, so it became hard for you to accept that they were really that good and also that bad. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard, especially because me, I was very invested in the entertainment. Yeah. Like yeah. I knew, as I've gotten older, I've gotten tired mm. of <laughs> following up what's happening. But I used to research, and I know, okay, this artist was discovered by so and so at this, and those are the things we used to see in movies. So I used to think being an endar you'll go to a certain restaurant and then there's this singer who is singing and then they have such good talent yeah. and then because we have to say you know what see me after <laughs> you <laughs> sign you up you pick <laughs> them up with a good deal yeah. and then you become part of their success story and then yeah. on to the next on to the next but you get mm. into the business and you see eh it's only stories that you never meet your heroes, heroes. Meet your heroes. <laughs> yeah because yeah, me when I'm not healed from arkeli Ar- me Ar- really broke me because i was just like you can't be doing this you yeah. cannot man your 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 songs have taken people through dark times you know yeah, like oh, storm is you, over man you storm. Are, when you <laughs> like, see when you open your mouth the world moves the the, the <laughs> hills quiver what do you mean you are a sexual predator like what do you mean sir make um, it make i was sense. mad i was me, I i'm so mad at him this case is the one that is really breaking my heart because this yeah. guy under bad boy entertainment he introduced the world to some of the biggest true, stars yeah. true, true but now if you now start seeing even the reality shows he was doing how he was treating this artist it mm. is awful yeah. it is really bad and you're just like i used to look up to you so much because you showed you showed us that you know me funny thing as a kid i was very racist in the kind of music i listened to mm-hmm. and i didn't like white people singing i was that chick for <laughs> all the black you know when people are saying oh siju west life i remember in high school sometime what to karibu and ipige when i said west life is overrated mm-hmm. because me i was that chick for Shame. boys to men <laughs> <You know? laughs> so i really yeah, you like them black, black huh <laughs> <laughs> i so much soul so much vibe and then now you you, you listen to what these execs who are supposed to be helping these artists 
Sorry for <laughs> moving away from the topic. We're supposed to be helping these artists. What they are yeah. doing to them behind the scenes is really, really sad. It is. It's traumatic to say the least. So PKs and TKs. Um, I'll read the last um, response I got, and then we can go to. That's a long one. <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> um, and then we we'll, feel the trauma. We can finish it up. <laughs> Hey Olive, so I'm here as a teacher's child and let me tell you it wasn't an easy journey. Do you tell me why my dad took me to his school in a whole different county? Kufika huko the other kids didn't want to call me by my name because apparently it was a hard name. Nikaanza kuitwa mtoto wa mwalimu. People who call me Orao call me Olive. <laughs> <laughs> so being the bright kid when I met in Nairobi, I started being number 1. That's in class 4 now. The whole of primary, I was number 1 to 3, so I had to maintain ju I started. Kufika upper class, sasa si you know the kufanya exams za mock na za weekends. Tell me why my dad would tell me over lunch break when I have failed in mathematics na si kuzuri na nangoja kichapo nyumbani so I had to work harder in my other papers you remember I have to be number one. Alafu papers kurudi I'm leading in the mathematics with some 90 to 98% percent. Now that happened every other time till nimalize KCSE So she when she was doing exams her dad would come midway and tell her you failed and I'll beat you up when you get home so that is apparently encouragement for her to work hard on the remaining papers mm -hmm. only for the papers to come back and find that she's actually passed that math so it okay. was just a threat a threat and yes, so mm -hmm. and i passed the problem the problem comes in when i now when i'm now being the parent to my sister so my dad has evolved he's no longer the strict parent na mimi he's no longer the strict parent the one mimi nili grow up with um sasa i went to pick my sister from school alafu amepata maths 20% and i was like that's not us i mean your dad is a maths teacher you cannot be getting that and i've been coaching her ju she's supposed to be getting better but now i'm finding out that we have different capabilities now that's why the pressure being applied to us is different but i'm learning that now we are different times are changing na kuchapwa kuwa number one is no longer a thing mwalimu wa math mwalimu wa math i have an almost similar story um, so i went to high school uh, yeah. and then i moved to a school where my dad went to and then the teachers happened to know my dad mm -hmm. my dad was always top of the class mm -hmm. and then one day Everyone failed a maths paper but yeah. I'm the only one who was beaten because I am smart but lazy so the ah. teachers were like when you were revu lakini when you mzembe so everyone failed actually we had g030 you know how some some exams you're like hey what's yeah. happening so i was the highest 03 <laughs> and then i was kind because Your dad is smart you're supposed yeah. to I don't know how people always expect that you inherit those genes I wasn't dumb I was lazy that one I accept but then but still everyone and, failed yeah, yeah. but why, how do you get picked you? out of the Yeah whole I think yeah that was very traumatic and th this is not even the pastor beat this was yeah. in school so everyone knows they know my dad and his brothers mm. so everyone in their family was smart no one is to fail so the expectation is up there I think that it it was very traumatic. That is yeah. Even me I was beaten. I remember being beaten in science and I I think I had gotten an 89% but I was being beaten because at I can do better. Of course I was better. Yeah. I should be able to do better. Eh, me imagine baby. you can't take me back to school. You can't convince you can't even <laughs> pay me <laughs> to go back to school. Even, I, <laughs> but even I, too much I, trauma. Yeah, and then they've talked about how Uh, you you also have your expectation when you see young people yeah oh, not yeah. even your own kids or anything so true, true, true. when i see kids i had a kid telling their mom i don't want to go to church i was like my yo a five year old kid yeah. like today i don't feel like going to church and the mom is like it's okay can you mm. watch the service online and she no i want to watch i don't know there's one two three go okay, <laughs> 
<laughs> I am <laughs> boiling inside. I'm yeah. like, hey, what's happening? But I, I like the new generation of parents. Mm. Uh, mm. I think CBC is sort of also an open mind, yeah? Because mm. I saw how there's a career day and every kid is choosing a career. Even if you don't oh, become that, nice. I saw kids who went to school as chefs. I saw kids who went to school as pastors. I'm like, oh. oh wow. So... Yeah, I like to so, meet them in a couple of years. Yeah, I, I me too, me too, <laughs> me too. Yeah, so I think the the new generation of kids yeah. are teaching people like, hey, listen, this is you, this is me. Mm. Yeah, so even the parents, the Gen Z parents, hey, I admire them. Job, yeah. yeah. And the other thing was people never used to talk. So as we were living in church, my mom was battling mental she has depression mm. so behind the scenes of that you see on sunday you see her in front there but mm. behind the scenes i always knew my mom is sick she has to take meds daily yeah. i never used to know why so oh. yeah so there's a time uh, when she lapses she, she blacks out she doesn't talk and then as i grew older i was like no I, I need to know what's happening so i one day i took her to clinic and i called the doctor and him okay la, just explain to me what she's going through i need to understand uh that's when the doctor explained to me uh so she's battling mental health in any she has had it for years since i was a kid so that mentality of the parent is sick but no one is talking about what mm. she's going through how we can support her uh i think there was that notion of hey imagine we be a pastor and end a therapy no one yeah, no one and that time so right now i think people are more open mm. because one of the pastors we had her daughter turned out to be a mental health advocate oh. and uh, she is very vocal about it she's even bringing it to especially church especially in the church yes. yeah she's bringing it to church she's encouraging people in church to go to therapy mm. they need it trust me they need it then uh, they need exorcism yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think the new generation yeah i really admire i i i wish i could regrow yeah. now <laughs> now yes. yeah yeah <laughs> i'm really curious though to to find a gen z pastor and their children i'm really and curious oh, about yeah, true mm. oh there's something you've said about now when your mom is going through depression and people are thinking oh bibi a pastor is equal and a therapy yeah do you guys feel like you experienced there me there are traumas i have me i don't like guests because our house was like a pastor's house yeah people would come in anytime whatever time i think teachers and pastors were held in such high regard at yeah, the time yeah like you would always come to amwalimu you'd always come to a pastor so me i felt like that that idea of living in a house that is so open mm. haunts me to date the 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 always there's someone who's walking in and when they walk in something needs to be served they need they can't yeah. live without having eaten something yeah. you need to have served them in some way maybe they've come to say, tell you something they've come with a problem i felt like we as the extension of teachers and pastors kids or the family we served as therapists without being paid or yeah i think there's also so people used to come home a lot mm. and it was draining it, it was draining yeah, that's the word <laughs> when there are guests there's how you're supposed to behave this mm. there's so much expectations dressing, how yeah. you're supposed to dress <laughs> <laughs> so to be chill with shorts and, and then yeah. I'm a chick, so i have to wear a dress <laughs> so the, yeah, i hated you know, I, i'm watching something on telly and then i have to yeah you have to <laughs> stop <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and then so when people come and then some of them have kids so you are forced into friendships that we oh, have hey, nothing in common oh, my, we have nothing in common with Lord. these kids hey. but you are forced <laughs> to go out with them and then even sometimes your parents force you to be friends with another pastor's kid and i'm i'm like i wish you know that kid is rebellious i wish i i, I, yeah. I was like i wish i could tell you <laughs> because <laughs> this person they're taking you they always sneak they teach you how to sneak yeah. me i'm goody goody two shoes i don't <laughs> i don't want to yeah, so sometimes you're yeah. forced to hang out with people you don't feel you don't vibe you have yeah. nothing in common 
And so, there's also the expectation of you are not allowed to say no. Yeah, so you you talk to them to try to you're supposed to help with the kids. You're yeah. Supposed, as in ah, no. The kid is dumb, you're supposed to help them study. The, yeah, like yeah. there was a eh, it He's was crying, give the milk, hold the kid. Like you weren't supposed to just ah, oh yeah. Release us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 They got us like chocolate hey, release us. It's enough. Let <laughs> us go. Yeah. My love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um that has that was actually our last response and probably I can just take parting shots before we close the episode. Frank. Yes, I'll start us off by for all teachers kids and pastors kids. In as much as you're in that position, not by choice, keep your circle small. The mm. small society help you, like you have a support system to assist you when you have those tough times. So, yeah, keep your circle small. People you trust with everything without hiding any part of you, because they are the ones that will bail you out when shit turns out. Mm. Mm. Keep your circle small. I mean, I think what I can say is. Hopefully it might get better because like for me um I actually became really tight with my dad as I got older. Mm. So as Diamond sings, Yata Peter. Yeah, it, it, it does get better but always always never lose your voice. Um mm. just um be ready to speak what you stand for. Don't always be taken by the wave. Yeah. But Hopefully things will get better because as you get older you realize that your parents are human beings um they're mm-hmm. also trying to figure out that parenting shit. May I always give my parents grace because I literally was their first child. They didn't know what to do and I looked easy to raise and then my siblings came and then they showed them shege. Leona dust. Yeah. Yeah, tapita and just stand firm on your beliefs. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh there's pros and cons, yeah. Uh mm-hmm. I think you can pick. I was taught to be a loving person, I was taught to be a good person, yeah. Keep that. Mm-hmm. Uh I wouldn't I'm one of those people who would, if I were ever to raise kids, I would raise them very differently. I wouldn't yeah. force them into church first of all. Mm-hmm. I would teach them about church, I would teach them about my what i believe so this is what i believe there is a higher being this is what the bible says this is those yeah. i can teach them but having forcing them that hey you your life you have to have a routine of going to church daily doing no 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 mm. I, i think that's and then the i i would want to raise kids who are aware of themselves like yeah. this is wrong this oh, is right yeah. This is wrong this is right and or make decisions for your yes child. yes and they yeah. help them become vocal because i think most people in church are not vocal uh, most pastors kids are not vocal they are sort of underwhelmed and uh, you can't say things against your parents so i think one of the things i would like i would encourage i would raise kids who know that you can tell me when you think i'm wrong And if you don't understand why I'm doing something, yeah. You can seek clarity. Yeah, you can come and ask me, "Dad, I don't understand why you did this to me. Why did you do this to me?" I think that will be it. Yeah, having said that, I don't want kids though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. people don't I love it. Um I I don't know. I would the, the The guest we had last week, Marcy, when she came on the episode for Why Did You Leave Church, she asked one thing. Kwani watakufanyia nini? Watakupiga. So you can you can choose to leave. I know when you're still dependent, when these are the people who are still paying feeding you, paying your rent, you might have to live a double life. That's okay. You you we see you, we feel you. But if once once you get the chance as Frank said that how when she got the first paying job she was out once you get the chance please know that it is okay to not continue living under the shadows of your parents and you've said there's pros and cons and I thought of one pro you know there's a, you can go I can go and ask for things from certain people and by virtue of being 
mtoto wa warao you I get, get yes so yes, that's, yes. That's, that's part of <laughs> that's this this, this pros <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah. oh mtoto wa pasta mope <laughs> so there's it's a, it's a balance it's a delicate balance but it's okay feel seen please know there are more teachers and pastors kids out there you don't you don't need to live under those shadows you will be plagued by guilt when you try to pick things for yourself so just know ni life imagine the life and it gets better it gets yeah it better. gets better it does <sighs> that brings us to the end of another episode of the in all honesty podcast thank you to my beautiful guests including incognito ones <laughs> <laughs> thank you and until next week my fabulous name is oliver rao and this has been the in all honesty podcast bye thank you for having us next on the in all honesty podcast So in the spirit of keeping it in the family firstborns please come forward and explain your side of the story so we'll continue to explore um some family topics and family dynamics in the next few episodes we'll start with firstborns then lastborns and then uh, middle kids so that we can just ex- um we can just get to share what were our experiences growing up um what are some of the things that have uh, that have affected how you are right now um are there traumas that you're dealing with right now you're healing are there things you're unlearning are you raising your kids in a certain way what have you noticed about yourself while you're trying to navigate the world right now as a firstborn because assistant parents that is a very problematic term to me but let us let us come together let us talk let us see where you're at let us see what we can do better with the firstborns that are coming after us and let's get to talk so tell me about your firstborn experiences how it has affected the trajectory of your life you know you can always talk to me through my dm at olive oral and you can also send your stories through my email at olive orawo at gmail.com bye do you hear that would you lend me some coins please the in all honesty podcast needs you to continue running i will deeply appreciate support from you you can send monetary contributions to my mpesa plus 254728 171059 via PayPal at Olive Orawo that is O L A V E O R A W O you can support the podcast indirectly by buying merchandise and services i offer listed on my whatsapp catalog my whatsapp number is plus +2547281711059 did you think i'd forget Advertise with the In All Honesty podcast. Hit me up to talk about it. You can do that via WhatsApp plus two five four seven two eight one seven one zero five nine or via email oliveorawo at gmail dot com or you can also DM me on socials at oliveorawo. You know the hand that gives will receive an episode every week. <laughs> I'm not where I want to be. But I'm in mean what was once a dream So if I do some quick math The future equals a dream come true Since 1992 in all honesty a podcast by Olive Orawo